Hello, star friends. Welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird here with your gemmeted meteor shower viewing guide. I'll tell you when to look and about the cool twist regarding the gemmeted's radiant point in 2025. Plus, we've got the latest on the gemmeted's parent object, the mysterious rock comet 3200 Phaethon. And my friend Marcy Curran, Earth Sky's voice of the night sky will be joining us later with some easy tips on how to take photos of meteors. So let's jump in. The 2025 Geminid meteor shower is one you won't want to miss. The Geminids are bright and the zenithal hourly rate for this shower, that's their maximum rate, is 120. That means that during an optimum night for the Geminids around 2 a.m., when the radiant is high in the sky, it's possible to see 120 meteors per hour. That's two every minute. And this is a long lasting shower. Earth began moving through the Geminid meteor stream in space in late November. That's the stream of tiny particles that enter our atmosphere to create the meteor shower. You might see a Geminid meteor anytime between now and Christmas, but this beautiful illustration from astronomer Guy Ottawell shows Earth on the peak night around December 13th, 14th. The predicted maximum is around 3 UTC on December 14th. That's 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on December 13th. So the Americas are well placed for this peak, but just remember, that around 2 a.m. is your best time to watch no matter where you are. And no matter where you are, know that the Geminids are such a strong and reliable shower that you might watch for a night or two on either side of December 13, 14, and still catch a good display. And here's some interesting news about the Geminids' radiant point in 2025, that twist that I mentioned. That is the giant planet Jupiter, the brightest star-like object in the December night sky, is right next to the Geminid's radiant point this year. If you trace any Geminid meteors backwards on the sky's dome, you'll see they seem to radiate from near the star Castor in the constellation Gemini the Twins. And Castor will be easy to find this year because Jupiter is nearby. And again, Jupiter is the brightest star-like object up there every night. You can't miss it. And you might get the impression that these bright meteors are radiating from this bright planet. And that would really be fun. And here's a little more context for the radiant point of the Geminids in 2025. Jupiter is the bright star-like object in the east in mid to late evening throughout December. It ascends in the east as Earth turns under the sky. So the meteors will be radiating from the eastern sky in late evening, but by around 2 a.m., the peak time to watch, the radiant will be higher up, closer to overhead. Now, notice the many bright stars near Jupiter, too. When we look in this direction, we're looking toward the outskirts of our spiral-shaped Milky Way galaxy. The bright stars near Jupiter now are really giants in our local spiral arm. More good news. The moon will be a waning crescent rising in the hours before dawn on December 14th. It'll be slightly slimmer than this photo by our community member Mandy Daniels in the UK. Mandy, thank you. Uh, so the moon won't interfere with the Geminid meteor shower this year. And in fact, you might enjoy seeing this little moonrise in the early morning hours on December 14th, when it'll be very near the bright star Spica and the constellation Virgo. The moon will be rising later, waning thinner, edging toward the star Zubinel Genubi in the mornings after that. We have daily charts like this one in our night sky guide at earthsky.org. The link is in the post description. Marcy will be here soon to share some photo tips. But first, 
the mysterious object that spawns the geminid meteor shower. These meteors originate in a stream of debris left behind by one of the strangest objects in our solar system. It's called 3200 Phaethon. This object gets very close to the sun, about half the distance of our sun's innermost planet, Mercury. Most meteor showers come from comets, but scientists call this object a rock comet. It's a kind of a comet asteroid hybrid, and we still don't know that much about it. We do know that when it sweeps closest to our sun, its surface gets hot up to about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. At that time, the rocky surface of 3200 Phaethon undergoes extreme rapid heating, and it also has strong differences in temperature between its day side, the side facing the sun, and its night side. And all of this causes the surface of 3200 Phaethon to crack, fracture, and shed tiny grains. And thanks to all that cracking and fracturing, we now know that uh, thanks to spacecraft observations, we know that 3200 Phaethon grows a faint and temporary tail around the time it's closest to the sun. So it's a rocky body like an asteroid, but it has a tail like a comet, and that's just weird. And does this process also account for the huge amount of material that must reside in the Geminid meteor stream? The answer is probably no. The amount of dust released when Phaethon is closest to the sun is far too small to feed or maintain the geminid meteors. And that means there must have been some much more dramatic event in the past for this object. Maybe a catastrophic breakup or a collision that happened uh, just a few thousand years ago. Whatever the reason, there's a lot of material in the geminid meteor stream, more than any other shower. And that's one reason the Geminids are generally accepted as one of the best, if not the best, meteor shower of the year. And now a special treat. Marcy is here. Uh, hi, Marcy. Hi, Debbie. Um, Marcy is our voice of the night sky here on YouTube, and she's here with some tips on how you can capture a photo of the meteors. If you want to take pictures of a meteor, you have to start taking pictures of the night sky. You can't predict where or when you're going to have a meteor zip across the sky, but hopefully if you're capturing a picture of the sky, you'll have meteors photobomb your shots. So any camera will work, a smartphone, a point and shoot camera, or a digital SLR. You want to use a wide angle lens. You want to go to a dark sky with a dark, big open sky. And we do have a page on our website called uh, Best Places for Stargazing, and that's at earthsky.org slash stargazing. And so you can look for uh, a site near you where you can go set up and take pictures. You'll be taking long exposure shots, so you definitely need to use a tripod. Uh, depending on your camera, you want to use modes like manual, night scene, or automatic. Kind of a word of caution, if you are using some of the automatic programs, you want to make sure and turn your flash off because you do have to take long exposure shots. Once you get set up, start using doing test shots to see what works. You want to go for about 10 to 30 second exposures. So you want to keep your stars sharp. So, you know, just kind of bracket exposures and see what works. If you do have a total manual setup, your aperture, you want to go from like F1.2 to F4, ISO around 1000. Uh, if you go a little higher than that, you might get noisy, grainy photos. But again, experiment and see what looks good, but you get sharp stars. And again, your shutter speed is anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. Since you are using a tripod uh, to get sharpest sh images, you want to maybe go for um, Use a remote if you have it. If you have a timer on your camera, pretty much everyone does, you know, delay your shot like two or three seconds so that there's no shake of the camera when it starts recording a picture. And some cameras even offer the ability to take continuous shots. And that's the thing. Uh, you are taking a picture of the night sky and hoping a meteor zips through the field of view. So you basically just keep taking a lot of pictures of the sky. 
And, you know, hopefully you will get quite a few shots of meteors. And that's why the wide angle lens is kind of nice because it covers a larger area of the sky. If the moon is out, which you won't have that problem with the Geminids, but if the moon is out, you can just adjust some of your settings because you're still going to get the brightest meteors, even if it's right by the full moon. So good luck, and I hope you catch some meteors. Thank you, Marcy, and thank you to the Earth Sky community members whose photos we just saw. Uh, any last-minute advice for us? I do have some advice. When you are out stargazing, especially watching a meteor shower, always keep looking at the sky. My astronomy club used to host a star party up at 9,100 feet in the mountains of Wyoming. So you have super dark skies. And every night I would give like a sky tour of, you know, you can see this constellation and give you some observing challenges to find in binoculars or telescopes. So later in the evening, people would come talk to me or ask me questions. And every time they would come talk to me, even though you can't see them because it's so dark, I would look in their direction instead of watching the sky. And soon while we're talking, you start hearing this, ooh, ah, wow, look, you know, and it almost <laughs> never failed. While I was looking at them, there's a meteor strike streaking over my head or behind my back. <laughs> Murphy's Law, look away. That's when the meteor flashes by. So Marcy, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy thank you so much. Uh, see you, you soon. Bet. Bye. All right. Bye. OK, you guys, so when you're out there meteor watching, stay watchful. And here's another tip. You can try watching with a friend. So the two of you can face different directions and call out meteor when you see one so the other person can turn and look. 2025 is a great year for the Geminids. I'm so excited for you all. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday, December 17th, to talk about the upcoming December solstice. I hope you'll join us then. And one last image. We received this one last night from Mike Lewinsky in Crestone, Colorado. But no matter where you are in the Northern Hemisphere, remember the December nights are cold. So a reclining chair and a sleeping bag will be a big plus. We'd love to see your photos and hear your meteor watching experiences. Please use the comments or the link for the community photo submissions. You'll find that in the menu bar on every page at earthsky.org or in the post notes of this video. Good luck, everyone. One earth, one sky, earth sky.